Okay, who do we have on the phone with us? It's Daniel here. Can you hear me? Daniel, we can hear you. Daniel, uh, you have a question for us? Let's hear it, Daniel. Where are you calling yes. from? Yes, I'm calling from London, UK. 10 p.m. right here. Oh, 10 p.m.? Okay, so you've got yeah. 10 people over your house watching the show. That's great. No, just my wife, actually. <laughs> oh, okay, very good. Is she a fan or no? Uh, she is a fan officially from today, yeah. <laughs> oh, very good, okay. I'll take it, I'll take it. Uh, okay, yeah. so you have a question for us? Let's hear it. Yeah, um, I'll just give you a bit of a background just so you can relate to the question as well a bit better. Um, so a couple of weeks ago, um, I was introduced to this guy. He's uh, a CEO of a fund which invests in renewable energy sources. And uh, he said, you know what, I've got this idea, I want to set up a price comparison website. So I thought, hold up a second, that's not really the area that I usually invest in. So anyways, I said, yeah, I'm a user experience architect, um, I know the you know the digital industry quite well, um, I'll help you out. And he said, well, that's great, because I've got money, but I don't have time to do it. Um, so here I am, I'm good with the design side of things, I'm good in terms of user experience, but uh, the one part I'm not good in is developing. So... I kind of thought I'll drop you guys a line, especially you, Jason, and the experience you've got. Um, where would I even start looking for good developers that have experience in the price comparison uh, sector? Right. Okay. So um, we get this question all the time. I am a non-technical co-founder. I'm a semi-technical. I need somebody super technical to work on my project. There's obviously not a lot of uh, technical talent just out there. Now, being outside of Silicon Valley means there's going to be more. And I like to pick apples from the orchard, not the bushel. Less chance of getting a worm, in my experience, uh, in the apple. So I like to go to the university or go to somebody out of school or go to somebody who's just getting their first job or maybe their second. Um, and giving them a chance and saying, I'm looking for an entry-level person. And then you have to deal with some nonsense. Maybe they don't understand how to do certain things. Or maybe they might do something unprofessional, not show up on time, whatever. I'd rather deal with that set of problems than deal with, oh, my God, I've got to compete against Google, Twitter, and Facebook for this incredibly high-level talent. I would rather uh, develop talent in a market like this. So my suggestion would be find somebody who's got 60% of the skill but 100% of the potential of what you want to do and develop that talent. What are your thoughts? So I love uh, the social web, right? right? Looking at LinkedIn, people that have done prior sure. work. Clearly, um, look on Twitter. Use Twitter search all day long, and try and uh, engage in communities. Like uh, with Boxy, we took open source software, and then we had 30 developers from around the world. We got them all together in Amsterdam for a developer conference. They'd never been together before, hmm. and then we took the best of that crew and hired a half a dozen of them to do Boxy. So, doing a social event, hosting something, can be a great way to actually put the honey out and let the bees right. come to you. Yep. Um, that's a great, great suggestion, and I forgot we're actually doing that here. My guys host the, um, we wanted to get people who knew how to scale servers here, so we started hosting the scale uh, event. We hosted Django event here, and we hosted the big data event here for Cassandra or Hadoop. Mm -hmm. So I just tell people, hey, host these events at Mahalo, I'll buy 200 bucks worth of pizza and soda, or, or 100 bucks, and we'll get, the, we'll get the speakers, but holy cow, did that work. Um, so yeah, I think building content around what you're doing, actually if you wrote a blog called uh, you know, comparison shopping blog or, you know, something about that or the future of shopping, the future mm -hmm. of shopping, that's it. Or the future of price, you know, one of those two. And you, you make a blog and every day you write one blog post about that and you link to different companies that have worked on stuff in the past or the present. Then when you email people, they have somewhere to go and read and they go, oh, this guy is smart. He's writing and he's thinking about intelligent things. Domain ex expertise. Right. You want, you want to foster I mean, wait, that. Listen, People want to get involved a lot of times in things I'm doing because they either watch This Week in Startups or read the newsletter. And those are my little media things where they get my Twitter account. I have all this media, this huge media footprint out there, and it just brings people to me. I can do meetings all day long. That's why the launch conference was so successful in the first year was because people had come on the radar already. I didn't have to go... I didn't have to pull. I didn't have to put, uh, push people in here. They they, they were drawn in. Yeah. Was pull not push something like that? Is that helpful? That was very helpful. Thank Tyler, you very your much. Thoughts. If you Fantastic. have some funding, um, and you can present a compelling idea, I might know somebody who might want to work on it. Oh, you might actually have a tech lead. Yeah. And then other people like have started this stuff where they're like, oh, I'm going to start a website where it's going to match tech people and you know founders. Listen, it's hard for a reason. 